Hey, before I start this video today, I want to say thank you to all the people that have been sending me well wishes and hoping I get better, you know, regarding my little facial paralysis issue here. It is getting better, but it's still there somewhat, uh, as you can tell from the strained blinking, etc. So please ignore the fact that I'm winking at everyone and ignore the uh, painful look on my face because when Turnip punched me in the eyeball, uh, while I was fully paralyzed and couldn't close my eye, he put an abrasion on my cornea. So now when I do blink and I manage to close this eye, it feels like I'm dragging broken glass across my naked eyeball. So not the best thing in the world, not the best feeling in the world. But that being said, let's get on to today's topic. Now, recently I posted a video on Instagram where I was telling people my coffers are getting low. I showed four of the bins that I use for the ammo that I shoot at the range most regularly and how low the supply has gotten. All these cans were three quarters full to almost full when I moved here a little over a year ago. And because I've been spending all my money on guns and not ammo, including money that I'd been saving for a custom build that isn't done yet, I blew on other guns. So I have no money, not even for the gun I got coming, much less ammo. Uh, my supplies have gone really low. Now I'm going to, have to reverse that over the next year or so. I've really got to build my ammo back up. I've got lots of boxed ammo and rifle ammo, but as far as the loose ammo I use at the range, really getting low. Well, after I posted this picture, it prompted a lot of people to ask me questions about stockpiling ammo. They said, what is your opinion of stockpiling ammo? What's your advice? What are your tips? Do you stockpile just range ammo? Do you stockpile defensive ammo? Or is it a combination? Well, in my case, I believe that when I stockpile ammo, it's not just so I can go to the range. I can buy ammo and go to the range anytime I want to, and I often do that so that I don't touch my stores. Or at least I did back when I lived closer to a shop where I could pick up range ammo on the way to the range. Now that I shoot in my backyard, can't do that. That's why my uh, levels are so low. But when I'm stockpiling, like I said, that's not necessarily for the range. It's more for shit hit the fan. What if something goes bad? What if there's a natural disaster, floods, earthquakes, whatever, or civil uprising? And I have to depend on that ammo long term. Well, I really don't want to have to depend on uh, range ammo long term. I just don't think it's effective enough, especially not really inexpensive range ammo that you would buy to save money while you're at the range for multiple reasons. One, I don't find it to be the most effective ammo performance wise. I'm not saying it's not deadly because it can be. I definitely wouldn't want to be shot in the face with it, especially not up close. But when it comes to defending my life or perhaps having to obtain food with it, it wouldn't be what I would choose. And it doesn't tend to be the most reliable ammo you can buy. Cheap range ammo just isn't. It often doesn't even have good crimps. It's more susceptible to damage to the powder, to the uh, 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 primers, etc., from moisture. So it's not really something I want to buy and store long term, especially not if I'm going to have to count on it to save my life or uh, help feed me or my family. So I think defensive ammo would be better for that. But the problem with defensive ammo is it's so expensive and you can't stockpile much of it. But here's the thing. Most of the cost of higher end defensive ammos is two things, marketing and the name. You're paying for those two things. You're not actually paying for the components of the ammo. There's not much difference in hollow points, etc. There's some difference between really different things like a solid copper bullet versus a lead bullet, etc. But when it comes to higher end jacketed hollow point ammo, which is good for self-defense, really not a lot of difference. Fortunately, I found ammo that actually can give you the performance of the higher end self-defense ammo, but it does it more for the price of decent quality range ammo. And that ammo is Minuteman Ammunitions. Now, this is a local company in Carson, Washington. Now, there's a couple of different companies named Minuteman, so I'll put the link, I'll write it on the bottom of this video here, and I'll put it in the link, uh, or actually in the description of this video below. But the reason I use their ammo now almost exclusively, when I go and buy ammo that I'm gonna store, I'm not gonna shoot that day, I buy Minuteman ammo. And here's why. This stuff is great ammo. Now I know a lot of people are gonna see that it's a private company, a smaller company, and they're gonna think, oh, reloads. No, it's not reloads. Everything they make is from all new components. They make it just like the big companies do. The biggest difference is they're not charging you for heavy marketing or for name brand. So you're getting 
self-defense level performance, and I'll show you examples of that here in a moment, at, like I said, decent range ammo prices. And to prove that here, let's look at a couple of the different ammos that I stock regularly and look at the performance levels of those ammos. Before we go any further here, let's make one thing perfectly clear. This is not a paid endorsement. This is not a commercial. I have not been paid by this company. I do not get free ammo or any other perks from this company. They've never given me a single penny or a single free round of ammo. Not that I would say no to free ammo. I would say wink, wink here, but wink's all I can do because free ammo is free ammo. But they have never given me anything. I also have no ties to this company or no loyalty to this company other than the fact that I love their product. I use this product, I spend my own money on this product. That's why I'm promoting this product. That reason and no other. And with that being said, let's get on with the video. Now, when we look at the Minuteman 10 millimeter, 180 grain jacketed hollow point ammunition, we're seeing a performance level of about 1,320 feet per second. That's self-defense level performance. That's high in self-defense level performance. And it comes to about 52 cents a round. Now, that doesn't sound really cheap to a lot of people, I'm sure, because you can go out and buy really cheap range ammo cheaper. Like if you buy Arms Corps, you know, you can get 180 grain full metal jacket Arms Corps for about 35 cents a round. That's cheaper. That actually would save you quite a bit of money. But like I say, one, I wouldn't want the cheaper range ammo full metal jacket, and I wouldn't really want to trust my life to it. So I wouldn't think that that savings is worth it. I would want to go up to something a little better performing, even if it was towards the cheaper end. And that would be something like maybe PMC Bronze. I like PMC Bronze for the range, and I think it's a fairly decent self-defense ammo. It's not high end, but it's towards the bottom of the price range for defensive ammo. But it comes to about 72 cents a round. That's way more than the 52 cents a round for the Minuteman. That puts the Minuteman in a good light right there when you're talking minimum performance for an affordable round. And still, the PMC Bronze isn't really up to the performance of the Minuteman. It's still, you know, 120 feet per second less. And you got to remember, PMC Bronze, etc., they're clocking their ammo out of a six inch barrel. So if you took it down to a four inch barrel, this is probably going to be down in the 900s. So not even close to the Minuteman. The Minuteman actually tells you the barrel length they're testing it in. They give you actual representations. If you took this one down to like a five inch barrel, comparing it equally to the Minuteman, it'd probably be around a thousand feet per second. Not quite up to par with the Minuteman. If you want to have a round that's going to come close to matching the Minuteman in performance, you're going to have to go to something like an Underwood jacketed hollow point in 180 grains. But that's going to cost you 92 cents per round. That's quite a bit more. That's almost twice as much. You can buy a lot more Minuteman ammo at that price than you could Underwood. And the Underwood is still going to only give you 1,300 feet per second, which is just a little bit less than the Minuteman. So it's really close to the Minuteman, but not quite. But I would say that difference is minimal. So the performance is about the same. What really comes into play here is the price when you compare the 52 cents around for the Minuteman to the 92 cents per round for the Underwood. So you can see there, if you're wanting a good performing ammo, but you don't want to pay any more for it than you have to, and you want to be able to stockpile it, that Minuteman makes a lot of sense. Another one to look at would be their 9mm Plus P 115 grain ammo from Minuteman. Now that performs at about 1,442 feet per second from, I believe it's a 5.3 inch barrel. Now this round comes out to about 33 cents a round. Now I know a lot of people will say, well, that's still not as cheap as you can get because you can get cheaper ammo. Like you can get like the Fiocchi or however you pronounce it. You can get their 115 grain standard ammo in a full metal jacket for about 17 cents a round. You know, that's like half the price. But once again, that's not ammo I'd want to trust my life to. It's great to buy and just take to the range that day. And it doesn't matter if it would, you know, drop a person or drop a deer. It just matters that it goes off and it doesn't even matter if it goes off every time because you're just at the range but for self-defense and trusting my life to wouldn't be something I would choose for stockpiling I would at least want to go up to something like the PPU the 115 grain ammo they have you know that ammo is a hollow point ammo and it performs a little better it's 1100 feet per second 
and it comes out to 29 cents around. That's more than the Fiocchi, but it's not much less than the Minuteman, which performs infinitely better. And remember the PPU in places, they use six inch barrels usually to do their testing. So you would actually get a lower performance of this. I'm betting it'll be in the high 900s compared to the 1400s of the Minuteman. So for that tiny little couple of pennies difference, I'm definitely going with the Minuteman. The Minuteman just performs much better at a similar price. And the Minuteman tends to be fully reliable. If you want something as powerful as the Minuteman 9mm plus P ammo, you're going to have to go up to something like Corbon's 9mm plus P115 grain ammo. But the problem when you go up to the Corbon is 87 cents a round. Far more expensive than the 33 cents a round for Minuteman. And the performance doesn't even match Minuteman. It comes to 1,350 feet per second. So just not up to par with the Minuteman, but still close enough that I don't think it would make a difference. So I'm going to call them equal. But the one thing that definitely isn't equal, like I said, is the price. You can buy far more Minuteman ammo and stockpile it. For every round of Corbon you can buy, you can buy like two and a half, almost three rounds of the Minuteman, especially if you find a good deal on it. So it just makes sense to stock the Minuteman when you want that minimum performance, when you want to get as much as you can out of the round, but you don't want to pay any more than you have to for it. So there you have it. That's why I think Minuteman ammo is that perfect compromise ammunition. And it's not a compromise in any way other than it's a tiny bit more expensive than the least expensive range ammo. When it comes to performance, it's high-end performance ammo and it's high-end reliability. So it is a great round. You're just not paying for the marketing and the name brand you would with the bigger brands. It's just every bit as good. It's just a lot cheaper. So I go with Minuteman. If I'm stockpiling ammunition, that means that's ammunition for later if I need it. I don't really worry so much about ammo shortages, etc. Because if there's an ammo shortage and I can't afford to shoot very much or I can't find ammo to shoot very much, I usually have one or two calibers I can find and shoot to keep me happy. So the ammo I stockpile, like I say, is something that I may have to someday depend on for food and protection. And when I have to defend on, depend on it for food and protection, I want high-end performance. Now, Minuteman makes all kinds of different ammos. They make full metal jackets. They make wad cutters. They make uh, uh, hollow points. It depends on what you want. So they all perform, like I said, top-notch. They're all reliable, but they don't charge you that extra money. They cost about what it does for decent self-defense ammo, like I said earlier. So if you're going to stockpile ammo, think about what it's for. Is it just for the range or might you someday have to rely on it? If you do think you someday might have to rely on it, then find something that performs as well as it can possibly perform for a decent price. And I think Minuteman Ammo does that better than any other ammunition I've ever found.